All right, good morning. Welcome back to Deb Break. Please introduce yourself. The show that gives you what you need to think about in the course <laughs> of the day and the entire week. My name is Zinzi Kibiku. Thank you so much for choosing Citizen TV this morning. Of course, this being a Monday morning, we'll have to touch on matters politics. I'll let you take the lead with that. But first of all, introducing our guests. Okay. My name is Sam Gituko, and we are with Senator from Moranga County, Rungo Kangata. Karibu sana to the show. Thank you. Fred Okango, the Secretary General. Or is it Frederick? Either. <laughs> Fred Okango, the Secretary General of the Third Alliance, Karibu Sana to the show. Thank you so much. And um, Antonio Loch, Member of Parliament for Matare Constituency. We're still expecting Senator Ledamo Lekina from Narok to join us on the conversation that we have this morning. Right, so, some of the stories make headlines. But I want us to begin with a story that has been causing conversations um, in different households as well as uh, on the internet. That is uh, after the First class betrayal that uh, aired last night on Citizen TV of uh, Kelvin Ocheng, a, a, a student or a, a graduate of, of uh, actual science, having gone to Maranda High School after scoring 392 marks out of 500 at uh, KCP level, joined Maranda, scored an airplane, then he went to study actual science at the University of Nairobi, graduated in September 2017. But he has, he has no job so far. He's had to spend on the streets, but now living with a good Samaritan. Let's just take a listen to what he had to say in that story. I was frustrated and uh, I went to live in the streets because there was no job coming. I found some dude. He was sleeping on the grass there that particular day. And we were eh, bro, bro, la la sa easy. Eh, can be a akona. Either she does a job, or she me fanya na ishi apo. Akane be any graduate. That one piqued my interest. I got 3.92 out of 500. I went to Miranda High School. I performed there and uh, scored an A. I was yearning to look, I was looking forward to a good university course that would uh, give me a good job. So I took actual science. I successfully got a first class honors in actual science. I need to work in a scramble to Patagari. I want to work So Patagari is going to Patagari in Gari 4 or I can't really get my hand at, at how I feel about the fact that Obede, index one in my year, who went on to become one of the best actual students at UN, is in the streets. It, 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 it's something else. All right, so is this a classic case, a classical case of what's happening among the young people that uh, you do so well in school, you end up jobless? What are the young Kenyans saying? Uh, thank you, Sam. Uh, first of all, I think uh, there are quite a number of such cases out there that probably the media have just not gotten a chance to highlight. There are quite a number. And that is the burden that is facing young Kenyans today. Mm -hmm. You go to school very well, you pass your exams, and when you graduate, you don't have a job because our economy is in such a way that it's not able to support the young graduates that are coming out from the university today. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we know for a fact that today white collar jobs that the young people are looking for are not there. They are very little to an extent that getting an opportunity mm -hmm. to work in a young, I mean, in a white collar industry is is Im close to impossible. And, and and you see, this is one of the reasons that we are saying it is a burden. And this burden, how do you lower it? So as we be discussing, we'll realize that one of the ways of trying to cure such instances is now we, not, we need to industrialize our, you know, our, our counties and take it all the way to the world so that we don't have that migration. Because most of these guys, they migrated from rural to urban in mm -hmm. the hope that they'll get uh, a job, in the hope that they'll get a better life. But it is not working. It is not working because the economy does not allow it. The money that is available is not enough to ensure that the young people get the jobs that they deserve, mm -hmm. having gone through the university education. Mwishmo mm -hmm. uh, um, from Mathari Constituency. So so when you listen to Kevin Ocheng, of course, giving his story of uh, the frustration he has gone through, it, it would occur to you that the education system that you've gone through, it doesn't guarantee you a job. Is it 
a challenge of him looking for that job or is it opportunities lacking in the country? I think it's a mixture of, of, of both. Listening to his story, a very sad uh, story. Apparently, I, I, I think the story as it was run, uh, we must congratulate at least first the person who hosted him from the streets who happens to be somebody from Madare constituency. Mm -hmm. From the story, I couldn't tell whether he is a resident of Madare. Mm -hmm. I think what I gather is that he schooled in Maranda, went to university, got straight A's, mm -hmm. and uh, was languishing somewhere in the streets, and this guy from Madare uh, picked him up. I think it's a mixture of, of, of both. Um, one, I think a case of uh, somebody who's really unlucky. I mean, somebody with straight A's in those, those days, people would be picked up from, from, from your village. You, you would be actually sourced mm -hmm. by the civil service and people who are now calling the media for jobs would actually have looked up this gentleman. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, I think we are in a situation where probably we have uh, too many people graduating with the same courses that we probably miss out mm -hmm. outstanding people like this young man with uh, straight A's. Mm -hmm. And then there is a question of uh, whether or not when we adopted 844, which was intended really to try and get guys with skills things, matching uh, instead of doing a career or choices just for the sake of doing them, mm -hmm. 844 was meant to equip people to do things that they can actually go out there and get jobs for. Now, so many years down the line, we're now getting into the competence-based mm -hmm. curriculum. Mm -hmm. The competence-based curriculum right. seems to be really telling us that 844 has failed. Mm. And we hope then that, that this question of mismatch between the careers and the things that we uh, allow our children in school to choose to do mm -hmm. actually end up giving them uh, a, a job. Mm -hmm. The other thing I think that we need to uh, talk about is that how much mentorship mm -hmm do our people get in schools in terms of uh, career choices right. uh, and the job opportunities that are available and who offers those jobs and you which brings think, me to you this point. You think his career choice is wrong? Um, I'm not really wrong, but how many uh, actuarial science opportunities do we have out there? Are there jobs for it and where do you get them? And I'm saying this to link it up with, I think, a bill which became an act of parliament by Senator Sakaja, mm -hmm. I think about uh, uh, employment authority. Right. And this was supposed to create a huge data bank and a go-to place by employers. Mm -hmm. And if that thing really functions, and I think it is dysfunctional, then we shouldn't have missed out that there was an A student in the name of uh, this gentleman out there with actuarial science. Right. So I think we need to relook this act. And there is a bill that I have proposed myself. It's called the Youth Employment Empowerment and Services Bill. And really it attempts to try and sort out all this mess that is the youth employment uh, problem. Mm -hmm. We have all these opportunities that we have for young people, all these funds that don't speak to each other, uh, that, are, that are not anchored in any provision of law, which are, they have now consolidated into Biashara Fund, Youth fund, women fund, uh, ways of fund, and all right. these things. Mm -hmm. And then we have um, um, uh, the employment authority, mm -hmm. which really seems to me to be a tower somewhere there that people down at the ground. Right. At least my people in Madare and other people, I don't know about Kangata and the mm -hmm. rest of you, don't really relate to this thing about uh, opportunities of matching uh, the things that we study to the employers. I think there's a big mismatch. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. Joining the conversation with us is Senator from Narok Central, Adamo Lekina. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you you. found us in the middle of a conversation where we're trying to understand one story we've just aired yes, last week and this, last night rather, and this morning of an A student called Kevin Ochien. Fantastic um, grades, but he's unemployed. So, Senator, let me begin with you. I was just roping him in. What's, who is to blame? Who is to blame for um, unemployment in Kenya? Is it um, the government? Is it the universities? Is it technology? Where does that manifestation, where do we place the blame on? Uh, several people are to blame. The first entity for me I should blame is the University of Nairobi. Mm -hmm. When you are at the University of Nairobi, every person who used to get a first class used to be guaranteed to do a master's for free. Now that the guy has, the, has, a, has a first class degree, mm -hmm. the University of Nairobi is not offering him to do a master's. Otherwise, if it was, the guy ought to be on scholarship doing his master's. And in terms to of me, employment? To me, is an indictment on University of Nairobi. But would master's really change the circumstances? That yes, it can. Now? It does. How it so? does. It does. Of of course, number one, you would not be idling, right? Mm -hmm. You'll be in class. 
Yes, in, in terms of yes. employment, Senator? In terms of employment, I also blame two entities. Of course, the Kenyan, in, the Kenyan state for failing to create enabling environment that then would spur opportunities for young graduates. Mm -hmm. Number two, I also blame him also. Let me also take this opportunity to a certain extent, not entirely. Mm -hmm. One, for me, I strongly believe this was a wrong career choice. For those people who know about uh, Kenyan job market, and we politicians, we tend to have that knowledge by which we receive a lot of uh, applications. Uh, for me, actually science has a problem. Uh, and for several reasons. One, uh, there is a professional course that one must do for him to become employable. Mm -hmm. That professional course is usually administered from... That is to practice as an, as an actuary yes. or for any job? No, for actuary scientists. Mm -hmm. That professional course is usually done in South Africa. It's very expensive. Otherwise, even if you get a degree in actuary science, mm -hmm. without that course, you rarely get employed in Kenyan market. And uh, in fact, by the way, uh, to, uh, to me, uh, uh, to me, uh, that's a more scandalous issue, which you guys you need to investigate. Do you know how many actual scientists we have? Those who are certified to practice in Kenya, mm -hmm. eight of them. The last time I checked, there are eight. Notwithstanding. Almost every campus in Kenya has an actuarial campus mm -hmm. or is doing actuarial unit. Mm -hmm. So we need to push that body to open up. We allow more guys to be certified and that way you give these guys opportunity. Uh, of course you need to also understand that uh, most of those guys who, who graduate with actuarial science, they, go, they get employed by the insurance companies right. and also banks. And also even the, 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 the betting companies, because it's about doing what we call fi financial predictions. Mm -hmm. So they are the ones who have tended to hire only guys who are certified, mm -hmm. uh, who certify guys. So to that extent, if I were, uh, if I met these guys b before he did this course, I would have told, have told him, him not to. Don't do actuary science, do medicine, uh -huh. do engineering, do even law, instead of doing actuary science. H how much information do these young people uh, okay. have? Can I also maybe comment a, a last point? Right. Uh, parliament is also somehow to blame. Mm -hmm. Probably we need to have enacted uh, a law, creating a local body for mm -hmm. curious scientists, and that we provide for an easier entry into that mm -hmm. market. Mm -hmm. We have failed to do that. Probably it's an area that uh, parliamentarians need also to check. And now that you've said parliament needs to do that, Senator Ledama, is the government responsible for solving unemployment? Yes, I think it is. Uh, and I think um, the onus is really on the institutions. Like Nairobi University should do, should uh, pull up its socks in how they prepare their graduates in the field outside there. When I went to school in the US, when I was uh, in my junior or third year in the university, I was constantly brought into a career training um, team mm -hmm. where they would talk to me about what is out there. So I think what we need to do is to start mentoring our youth, bringing a lot of career training, bringing people in the field so that they can be able to help recruit these people. I think also the corporate body has got to now, you know, sort of like start paying attention on these intelligent young men who are there who are just um, you know, wasting away. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think the government can actually be able to come up with new legislation encouraging universities to be able to develop these uh, career training courses mm -hmm. where it doesn't matter what you're studying, you mm -hmm. know, because if you don't prepare yourself to become a journalist, let's say if there's nowhere you can be able to team up with citizen if you're a student at Desta University or multimedia university, there's no way you can be able to prepare yourself. So this is a, a, a task that all the, both the corporate body and the government have got to come together and work so that we can be able to use this intelligence. So what's a long-lasting solution here, especially given an employment rate within Kenya? I, I shouldn't even go beyond the African, within the continent, but just even within Kenya, what is the solution to one, our we have to be very <coughs> One, we have to be very creative. And also, we have to be able to encourage corporate bodies uh, we have to reduce taxes to encourage that if any institution is able to absorb so many interns and maybe take them and train them, reduce taxes for them. I think one of the biggest problems that we face in this country is that the high level of taxation makes it very difficult for institutions to have uh, more profit that they can be able to share. Mm -hmm. Universities also have got to be creative. If we're not creative in terms of uh, how we prepare our students, then even students out there looking for to join a university, 
those should be a few of the things that they should be observing. Is this university going to prepare me to be able to get a career, you know, and to be able to lead a good life once I'm done with the school? Mm -hmm. Because if we don't do that, then a lot of us will begin supporting Makoha when he says that certain courses in the universities are useless. Right. Because then why should I go <coughs> spend all that money, you know? And then now I'm subjected to sitting on an exam in South Africa where it's very expensive and I cannot mm -hmm. be able to, you know, own a living. That story of that young man is very sad. I watched it this morning, actually right. on YouTube when I was coming. Mm -hmm. And I was really perplexed, you know. Right, and, and I also I'm, comment I'm, one point. Just before you do, I'm looking at some of the feedback that um, DJ Triple M said that uh, at some point someone should take action on the real issues. Tomorrow that guy will be employed and Citizen TV will celebrate a successful story. Indeed we will. And what about the rest <laughs> of us? Who is attempting even to solve the real problem? Nobody. Then someone else is saying that um, this, this ties well with what you are saying, that uh, this is certified quarter, <laughs> Serone Jason. Please connect Kevin to me. He should come to Germany for his master's degree. Education must have meaning. This is so painful to bear. And I want to pose the question to the extent that uh, this is an A student. He has gone to school, exemplary performance. Now you're telling him to go and study a master's degree. To what value? How does he resolve the crisis he's in right now? And also, how do you help the young Kenyans who have no access to information that Kangata is talking about? Yes, can I you just comment some. one point? Eh? Okay, uh, uh, go first. Uh, the reason I say that because I also teach at uh, Catholic University and I see these problems. Eh? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, to a certain extent, also students need to know the skills of what we call networking. Mm -hmm. uh, I say that because you'll find that students who come just reads, then goes home. Uh, but uh, from my experience, I can tell you that is never enough in life. Mm -hmm. That you need, for instance, to go, let's say, for instance, uh, strategically become a choir member, join a church, mm -hmm. uh, join a certain association. <coughs> Through those associations with mm -hmm. people who are more successful, mm -hmm. you always have this tendency to create key networks mm -hmm. that uh, when you get at the university, you activate net networks mm -hmm. and the chances of you succeeding, they tend to go high. Take for instance myself, when I was at the university, uh, somehow I wanted to join politics. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you when I was in first year, I knew people like uh, James Orengo, they were my friends. So uh, m my point, which I tr I'm trying to tell young people, you start networking immediately, you come to the university. Mm -hmm. Particularly those who are in Nairobi University, or Jomo Kenyatta, or Kenyatta University, because Why we are, oh, of course they are right uh, uh, near the capital city, mm -hmm. and you know opportunities are here. Okay, <laughs> so the opportunities are in Nairobi. So how do you take opportunities to the Mashinani? And as you respond to that question, how do you help Kenyans, young Kenyans, access information so that when they're making their choice, they're just barely like 17 or 18. How do they, in, uh, in an informed way, make a decision in their careers? Now, some in every institution, right from high school, we have got career guidance. And it is up to the institutions in those departments that are dealing with the career guidance to start shaping the students towards what they want to be in life. And when they arrive there, then the government now should ensure that they protect those people. Some of these youths are not protected, while our constitution is very expressively, I mean, is expressively uh, giving that provision that it is the function of the state to protect the youth and even offer them opportunities. Now, if you look at our institutions today, we cannot say that opportunities are only in urban center, as Kangate is saying. Mm -hmm. Somebody who went to the university, for example, in Maseno, is not like in real urban center like Nairobi, but they also hope for a better life, just like the same person who went to the University of Nairobi. Mm -hmm. What we are saying is, the career guidance should lead into a profession that would help you in the future. But the issue here is, why is it that we are still thinking that opportunities can only be found in urban centers? We must change our thinking and ensure that now we take opportunities to the villages. How do we do that? We must develop our villages. We must develop our counties. So that in the counties, even if I study a course that is very difficult to, get a, I mean, to be placed in the job market, mm -hmm. then I still have a life to live and participate. Number one, look at it this way. Opportunities that come in the counties come with industrialization. What does that mean? It means we must make our counties units that can accommodate more people than
counties that now make people to live. The young people in this country have always believed that if you travel to Nairobi after your education, mm -hmm. that is the only way you can get education. And that's why you realize mm -hmm. the crime rate in urban centers are so high because of that migration. But we are saying... Hasn't devolution helped this? Devolution, I, I like your question, devolution has helped. But we now have to go beyond devolution at the county headquarters. We must take devolution down to the wards. Where mm -hmm. are the people of Kenya? The people of Kenya are in the wards and villages. Uh -huh. But where are these people coming from when they're going to school? They come from the ward and the villages. That industrialization, that networking they're talking about, there's somebody down there who mm -hmm. also is facing the same challenges. There's somebody down there who is in parliament and represent those people. You know, and these people, they have got the network. We have got scholarship opportunities. Mm -hmm. Let me give an example. Come on with scholarship. We have got the Chivini. The members of parliament, the elected leadership, in one way or another, they interact with some of these institutions. They can assist. But you know what? We have also seen a scenario where the opportunities are given to the not deserving. Mm -hmm. We must now uh, become to, I mean, uh, be to the, the fact that the opportunities that are deserving must be given to the deserving students. All right, Honorable Lodge, let me rope you into the conversation. Senator yes. Kangata talked about him doing his master's. But does yeah. a master guarantee you employment in this day? It doesn't, but I think uh, we look at it against the background that it is um, an, an, an employment opportunity because we have all these universities where uh, uh, <coughs> teaching takes place and getting yourselves into a master's potentially puts you in a position where you can be a tutorial fellow, and uh, post-tutorial fellow, if you do graduate, you have the potential of being engaged to uh, work as a lecturer within the university. It is a line that you can choose to decide that I want to be a career lecturer or a teacher or a professor. It's a path and it's an option. I think that's what Kangata was saying. Mm -hmm. Being a straight student, and we're not saying that's the only thing he could have done, but being a straight A student in those days, mm. if you're a student like that, you are automatic material for any university to want to pick you up. Okay. And there were all sorts of scholarships that you would get to go to top universities countrywide. But then coming also into way forward and how we deal in, into this. I think there are various layers of mentorship and career choices and modeling that we need to do. Mm -hmm. There is the level at the professional level and I will tell you that uh, from a legal perspective, uh, lawyers who come out of university, there is a process through which they are mentored, uh, the process of pupillage and the process of going for attachment. And this process, and most lawyers will tell you, mm -hmm. that the lawyer that you become is not so much the law that you learn in school. It is the mentorship and the opportunities for training that you have in the exposure mm -hmm. with a top law firm or a good lawyer. Uh, for, uh, I assume my, my good friend Senator Kangata is one of them and I hope he's doing mentorship. Those are the kind of opportunities we should do mm -hmm. if we had a career mm -hmm. or an association of actuarial people. These are people who should be able to take up first class A students like these ones, mentor them and bring them up, uh, up the line. I think there is a level of mentorship that is lost at the family level. Perhaps mm -hmm. at the family level, we have seeded this opportunity and we assume that our children know what they want to be. Uh, we, we probably don't do enough. We don't talk to our children enough. Okay. I remember in, um, uh, before I did my law, I did a BA in literature, sociology, and philosophy. And I remember the argument I was having with my parents going into Kenyatta University, and they insisted that I go do education. And I asked myself, I don't want to do education. I think that uh, there is too much... Uh, people doing education, the market is flooded and you probably have a lot of these conversations. Mm. A lot of the times you have your parents say, I want you to be this, not thinking, what does my child really want to be? Let's have that conversation around the family. And lastly, at the institutional school level, I think this is the biggest gap and one of the things I am trying to do myself, and I've seen other mem one or two members of parliament, I've seen Senator Malala do this um, uh, uh, in, in, in Kakamega. I'm going to have, I think, on the 2nd of September in Madare okay. constituency, and I want to bring all manner of players, university uh, forums, I want to bring in the uh, professional bodies, the LSK, people who would eventually end up absorbing anybody who's coming out of s school. I want to have on the 2nd of September what you call uh, Madare Constituency Career and Mentorship Day. Let's bring all these people who 
absorb people, equity foundation, wings to fly, safari com foundation, come and speak to these people, okay. people who succeeded in the industry, so that we have proper career choices being inculcated into our pupils and students at the, at the, at the school level before right. they even go to the university. All right, much yeah. more, we need to take a break on that note. But when we return, we'll be talking about other matters in a, specifically to do with the Punguza Mizigo um, Constitutional Referendum Initiative. We'll be looking at uh, the possibilities of uh, the success of that as well as why leaders are so divided regardless of where they are allied in terms of political parties. So stay tuned and text us your views on 2242 or you can tweet us at Citizen TV Kenya, Asam Gituku, and at Zinzi underscore K. I understand we have a tweet. Yes. Which you can look at. Uh, this is from uh, DY Naina. Unemployment is a creation of our systems. I graduated with a master's from Duke, uh, one of the best universities in the US, but coming back, I couldn't get a job. I'm currently doing my PhD here in the US. They said education was key, but they changed the law. <laughs> Oh, good. <laughs> so he's doing a PhD. Yes. All right, Steve on Twitter, good morning. You say, how would you advise a young Kenyan people who watch the series of the first class betrayal that education is the key to success? Poor country where you are or rather you are employed according to whose son or daughter you are. Too bad. Mm -hmm. All right, this is uh, being a... Uh, or binge 2013 some of us our career choices were done by the university themselves after finding that you had not uh, qualified for your choices they made it for you after 20 years applying without any success then the government job application constraints health care credit bureau etc the challenges that young people have to go through after of course uh, qualifying for different um, professions